taking my title, uh, you will probably think uh, that I've lost my mind, but uh, it's still there, I promise you. We'll preach for the next few minutes, and uh, y'all got your pen and paper ready. All right. My title is Hickory Dickory Dock. <laughs> oh no, an elephant. Hickory Dickory Dock. Oh no, an elephant. Amen. Are y'all ready? <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Hickory Dickory Dock was a nonsense poem that was uh, had used as alternate nation sounds and children mimics the sounds of a clock chiming. And at, at, a, at a certain point in the song, the, the children would uh, would mimic that. They would go click tick tock and. Hickory Dickory Dock, and uh, and uh, and it, it, this uh, Hickory Dickory Dock it was intended to introduce children to the fundamentals of telling time. It was the the this, the start, and you think about in the in as a child, it was uh, that song that they try to teach you to to uh, learn the importance and the fundamentals of telling time and from a child when we were old enough to understand it is instilled in us the importance of telling time uh, we understand that everything revolves around time even when we are a baby there are certain times that that we do things there's certain times that, that things happen if we remember uh, raising our, our kids there's certain times that we feed and there are certain times we got to check the diaper and there's certain times you're going to have to lay them down and, and certain times you're going to have to get them up and and you, you got to have to you know you see what time is it I, I got to check that baby's butt I, you know what time is it I got to make that baby a bottle what time is it to, uh, they've been taking it out way too long if they sleep any longer they're not going to sleep tonight they're going to be up all night because it is uh, it, 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 our, our, from the time we was born we are, are are controlled and our whole life is based on time when we eat and when we sleep as a child we, we don't want to get our days and nights mixed up we, we, we have that that clock inside of us the uh, as an adult uh, where our lives are controlled by time uh, sometimes it's hard to find enough time in the day to get everything done has anybody ever felt like that you just wish the Lord would just give us five more minutes. We'd like to preach for five more minutes. Just five more minutes, Lord. Just, just five more minutes and I'll be able to get this house clean. Just five, just five more minutes and I'll be able to get this job done. And the sun starts going down. It's, well, it's starting to get dark. I'm not going to be able to work. But we are controlled by time. We have a certain time that we got to get up. We have a certain time that we got to go to work. We have a certain time that we got to eat lunch. We got a certain time that we got to eat. we got to get off work. There's a certain time that we got to be somewhere after work. I mean, it has, to, has a lot of errands you got to run. Right. Amen. Well, they're controlled by time. You know, if they close at four o'clock and you show up at four fifteen, it. You miss the time. There's certain times you, you you are bound by by time. There's a certain time that you have to be at church. Right. Now hold on. Woo. Amen. I give y'all revelation. Amen. Amen. There's a certain time you're supposed to be at church. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that time, but uh, I'll let you you get with a sign out here. There's signs out here. If you have any other questions, ask some of the ministers. I don't want to bring anybody spirit down. Today, but there are certain times that we're supposed to be here at the house of the Lord. There's a certain time that we got to go to bed, and uh, I'm not know that there's times if I don't go to bed by this time, I ain't gonna be able to get up by that time. That because uh, you know, because you know that there's a time you got to get up out of bed, and so you have to go to bed by a certain time. We are controlled by time, and if you don't, if you don't look at the clock and you go through your life just not even knowing what time it is, you are very unorganized person just blown by the wind, don't ever get nothing done, and you're you're not efficient by anything, but you show, you show me somebody that, that uh, has got a, a, a calendar, and they got a clock, and they say I gotta be here at a certain time, and I gotta leave there, I gotta go here, I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, and, and you show so you, you, you'll, you'll see somebody that's gonna get some stuff done. Because if you don't know what time it is, uh, you, you you can't get anything done. Yeah, that's right. That's, right. that's why you tell them preschoolers, Hickory, dickory, dock, the mouse ran up the clock. 
Amen. And the clock struck one. Ding, it's one o'clock. You need to wake up. You need to get in the house of God. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yes. Come on. Hickory dickory dot tick tock tick tock. Amen. The clock keeps going. That many times we lose track of time. Has anybody ever ever done that? Anybody ever just uh, just look down and say, "Man, I, I missed it. I, I knew I was supposed to be at church at one o'clock, and it's already to the twelve forty-five, and I just woke up." <laughs> or or whatever. Or you had to be at work, and I I remember those times when I woke up uh, late, and you talk about the office feeling never was when you're supposed to be at work at at six thirty, and you wake up at six fifteen, and you're like, oh man. When you start panicking and start rushing, you lose track of time. Amen. And, and it causes us to be late. And many times we lose track of time. It's not because we mean to lose track of time, but it's because uh, 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 it just something happens and, and, uh, and things take longer than expected. And, and somehow we lose track of time. And, and many times say, I'm sorry I would have been here. Sorry I would have called you. Sorry I would, I would have done it. But I've lost track of time. And many times it's not that you don't know how to tell time. But it's not that you didn't try to, to base your life around time. It's just somehow time got away from you. Amen. But I, I want to go back up and disappear from my message just a little bit. But I remember a time when you used to come to the house of God. And you would, you would lose track of time. More people are worried about time at church than they are any other time in their whole life. You sit down at the, at the, to watch a movie. The first thing you do when you pick up that movie before you put it in the DVD player, you don't turn around and look and see how long it is. No. Oh, that movie's too long. I don't want to go to something else. No, you don't worry about how long it is because time doesn't matter because it's so important. But when you come to the house of God, you, you look down and uh, oh, the preacher's done been preaching 10 minutes. He hasn't even gotten started on a sermon. Uh, what, what in the world's going on? <laughs> and we're going to be here all night. Uh, we're going to be all, here all day. But, and you're just more worried about time uh, than any uh, church in any other place. But I remember when we were just growing up, uh, when we put away the clock, uh, time didn't matter. Uh, we would just worship God in spirit and truth. Uh, and we were called uh, in His presence. Uh, it's foolish of joy. And at His right hand is pleasure forever. It doesn't matter how long it's been. You, I just want to say, I want to dance. Uh, When I think of His goodness, nobody sing to And all done for me. When I think of His goodness and how He set me free, I'm gonna dance, 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 dance all night. How long is all night? Who knows? When the sun comes up, all night, all night, all night. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They worry about having to be at work in the morning. They said all night. I'm going to worship Him all night. I'm going to praise Him because we lost track of time in the presence of the Lord. All right. All right. Time was introduced in the Garden of Eden. It's there that mankind uh, his, uh, starts His uh, eternal clock and His eternal clock started ticking. And uh, we have the ability to have the sense of time. We know that uh, in our own mind, have you ever just uh, woke up and, you, and it was time to get up anyways, but the alarm hadn't went off? Somehow you have an eternal clock. You know your body automatically knows what time you're supposed to do things. Your body already knows you have an eternal sense, sense of time, and that's something the preachers hasn't got. But because we don't know how long we've been, but internal, but out in the world, I mean, it, it, most people do have the ability to tell how long it's been. You say, "Well, I'll be there in about five minutes." And normally, about five minutes, it's over. Or it take me about this long to get the job done, and and normally it has to be about that that particular time. They can come around and work, and when are you going to get this done? All right, give me, uh, well, give me about. Figure it up, that sense of time just kicks in. We'll give you about 15 minutes, and 15 minutes on the dock, you're getting done. Because you have that eternal clock that's ticking inside of you. It started in, in the Garden of Eden. But before sin entered into the world, there was no time. You was just in, in, in uh, eternity. You was 
from a little forever boy and sin entered into the world. Man's clock started ticking. If you had that click tock, tick tock inside of your chest that said one of these days time is not going to there's going to be an end because there was a beginning of the time that started with mankind in the garden of Eden All right. Amen. it started there um, you know uh, men will live forever uh, we have uh, our days are numbered Job chapter number 14 verse number 5 says seeing his days are determined uh, the number of his months are with thee that uh, thou, that hast uh, that thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass let me tell you something you have that day that's determined by God and one day you're not going to have any more time time will be no, no more you want your time is over you have that time when you were born and you're going to have a time when you die you only have a certain amount of time in life because the end's going to come soon in your life and it's not going to last forever I want to tell you if you come to the house of God this opportunity isn't going to last forever your life isn't going to last forever you might feel like you're going to live for for till till uh, till you till you're like 150 but I'm going to tell you you may not know that number but that number is determined by God let me tell you God's got everything in your life planned out he knows exactly what you're going to do he knows you're in from your beginning he knows the, the way that you take and when he has tried you you shall come forth as pure gold he has numbered your days he's determined the days in your months he's determined every breath you take he knew when you were going to come to him and get born again in the water of the spirit and if you walk away from God he knew that too but when he knew that there's going to be a day that you're going to come back to God and serve him he knows everything there's not a thing that God don't know he knows when you were born and to the when you die yeah. Amen. he knows it all he determines that he counts the, the hairs on your head yeah. and as people say he counts the ones that fall out he knows he knows the, the time that you have you don't know the day you're going to die but all you need to know is you better make sure that you 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 have take uh, value in the day that you have. You take value in the time that you have. You only have a certain amount of time. You're, you're going to leave this old world. Uh, but you've got to live like it's the last day of your life. This might be your last service. This might be your last uh, altar call. This might be the last time you can worship the Lord. You need to, uh, to understand that Jesus has an end date to your life and time's not going to be anymore but you kind of have to live like this is the last service yeah. Yes, yeah. in the song Hickory Dickory Dock uh, said there are several animals that goes up the clock and, and comes down uh, and the clock strikes to the next hour tick tock tick tock but the last animal that comes into the room uh, the last animal that comes into the room is uh, the elephant. And uh, their response um, to, after seeing the elephant is, uh, an elephant? Oh no! The elephant. An elephant? Oh no! The elephant walks towards the clock. And the clock uh, the, uh, walks up the clock. And the clock shatters into a million pieces. And there is no more time. No more tick tock. Hickory dickory cock. The time is up. The elephant has destroyed the clock. And the elephant has put an end to the clock. Oh no. The elephant has come into the room. Have you ever heard the saying of the elephant is in the room? Right. Yeah. Has anybody ever heard the elephants in the room? When you say the elephant is in the room, that means that there is an obvious problem or situation that people do not want to talk about. 
difficult situations and unpleasing experiences. A heavy cross to bear. All right. The elephant is in the room. In our walk with God, there are elephants that are things that walk into our lives and we do not want to talk about them. Yes, there are obvious problems and difficult situations, but we try to avoid the subject. Amen. But ultimately, the elephant will put an end to the time that we have. It will destroy us in, in, in every way. We call It will cause us to reach that place to where the clock stops ticking. One day, uh, 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 God will no longer deal with the hearts of man. It will come the last time the elephant will put an end to time in your life. You will no longer be able to pray. You will be no longer feel the drawing of God. The elephant is in the room. Amen. If the elephant is not addressed, it will control what time you have left. If the elephant is not addressed, it will make you do well where you're not able to work for God efficiently. The, if the elephant is, is, is not dealt with, it will keep you from doing the will of God. God will not always strive with man. Genesis 6 and verse number 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. That his days shall be a hundred and twenty. It will come to an end. God's going to deal with you for the last time. One day it will be your last opportunity and your last chance to get saved and then get what you need from God. This might be your last chance. All right. Amen. If the elephant in the room is not dealt with, it will put an end to your clock. Oh no, an elephant. Hickory, hickory, dock. Oh no, tick tock, the clock is going, it's ticking. But the elephant is in the room. I want to tell you something that there's some things in your life that's going to destroy you. There's some things in your life that will put an end to your walk with God. There's some things in your life that you do not deal with them. There are obvious problems, there are situations, there are heavy crosses to bear. But if you don't take care of it, it's going to destroy your soul. It's going to destroy your walk with God. And you will not longer have that dealing that God is pulling on your heart. I pray God give me one more time. God deal with me one more time. God deal with my heart and convict me one more time, God. Don't let this be the last time you convict me of something. Hallelujah. There was a man in the Bible that had an obvious problem. Uh, it was an obvious, obvious situation in Mark chapter number 10 that uh, it was an elephant in his life. It was that thing that he had to deal with. It was it was blind Bartimaeus. And the Bible says in verse number 46 of uh, chapter number 10, it says, And uh, they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho... Uh, uh, with his disciples, a great number of people. Blind man, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. You notice that scripture says that he went into the city and uh, didn't, didn't deal with him or whatever, didn't heal, heal blind Bartimaeus. But as he was walking out of the city, he was walking out of the city. He ain't going to be back there anymore. There was that blind man, Bartimaeus, he says, and when he had heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he, he began to, to cry out, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And, and many charged him that he, he should hold his peace. But he cried more great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus stood still. 
me tell you something. When you cry out to God, Jesus is going to stop everything he's doing to address your situation. Here was that man who was blind from his mother's womb. He was blind. Bartimaeus. Everybody knew him as blind Bartimaeus. And he commanded him and called the blind man saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise up. Arise. He called thee. And he casting away his garments rose and came to Jesus and Jesus answered and said unto him what wilt thou that what uh, thou what thou that I should do unto thee the blind man said unto him Lord that I might receive my sight and Jesus said unto him go thy way thy faith has made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way I'm going to tell you he reached that point that if he did not deal with his blindness he wouldn't have any more opportunity to see Jesus yeah. alright when we come to the house of God many times we don't know if it's going to be our last time when we see that problem that nobody wants to, to deal with. We see that elephant on the side of the road. Let's be quiet, blind Bartimaeus. Keep quiet. But he said, no, I don't want to have to deal with this any longer. This might be my last opportunity. This elephant in my life is going to destroy me if Jesus does not heal me. Jesus, right. my son of David, have mercy on me. Right. And it got Jesus to stop because of his eagerness and his understanding that this was his last opportunity. This was his last chance for Jesus to heal him. Amen. It was the last time. Amen. That, uh, that he had that opportunity. That Jesus was going to pass by. He was leaving. He wasn't going to come back. But have mercy on me, Jesus. I got this situation. Have mercy upon me, Jesus. There are things in our lives that are elephants to us. There are sins and iniquities that people try to ignore and avoid talking about. There are things that's in your life that's going to destroy your soul. We don't want to talk about it. Uh, but there are some things that's going to keep you from doing the will of God and will ultimately put an end to time in your life spiritually and physically. It will destroy you and your walk with God. The first one I want to talk about is selfishness and self-righteousness. It is that it is all about yourself and how good you are and, and uh, this will ultimately destroy you when it's all about yourself but it's not about you it's about the blood of Jesus and it's the Sadducees were very self-righteous people and you see in my Matthew chapter number 3 verse number 7 what Jesus said about the Pharisees he said and he said but uh, when uh, he had saw Many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, they are come unto his baptism. He said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned thee to flee from the wrath to come. We tell you, if you are self-righteous, there's going to be wrath. And the Bible says that they, he, Jesus called them vipers. Yeah. You are There are some snakes that shows up to church. And they're self-righteous. They think they're better than the preacher. They think they know everything there is to know. And they come and their all their main purpose is to destroy the work and the will of God. Yeah. All right. That's right. That's right. Well, Pastor Don all right. I'm preaching next Sunday, so be the judge then. <laughs> self-righteous. They go around and they try to challenge the preacher. Oh, no, maybe he, I don't think he knows, really knows what he's talking about. They go around and they're self righteous. They think they got it all together and they don't need God. They think they got it all together, but I'm telling you, 
that the self righteousness and and, and selfishness when it's all about pleasing you and if that you don't get rid of that it will destroy you. Have you ever seen those people when the preacher's preaching? They say, "Oh, he's not preaching to that for me. He, I don't think he's doing a very good job." And it's your very selfish when the song certain song plays and you don't like it. You don't worship, but when the song you like comes on, woo! Brother Mark would sing that song one more time. We sing that every Sunday if you want to. I love that. But Brother Eric, he might like the other song I sang. But we're selfish. It's all about us. Yeah. I'll tell you, this, this service isn't about you. Yeah. Amen. Man, this church ain't about you. It's about him. Yeah. It's about the cross. It's about the earth. It's about worshiping God. If you come to the house of God, and your, your worship is only to please yourself. You are selfish. And you are self righteous, and you are a snake. And you're getting ready to be took up and traded on. Amen. Because there's some things that you're going to have to, uh, to, to destroy that's in the church. It's self righteousness and the spirit of the viper that comes to destroy the work of God. We're going to have to take it up. We're going to have to walk on it. We're going to have to shake it off. We're going to have to get rid of this in our church. But it ain't about me anyway. Thank you all for helping me with that. Amen. We don't want, I like what Brother Thomas said, you know, when they, no matter what they sing, I'm going to worship. That's right. Yeah. They sing a song I don't like, I'm just going to worship. That's right. You're like, well, I don't really like that song. It ain't about if I like the song or what. It's about worshiping Jesus. That's it. Yeah. If they sing a song, oh, how I love, he loves us, oh, how he is jealous for me. We're like, oh, I hate that song. Oh, they repeated the chorus one more time. <laughs> Come on. Go to the next song. I know it's going to be better than this one. We don't need to do that. We don't need to say, well, get out the bangers and we will start shouting. Get out the cymbals and we'll start slinging our hair. Get out and we'll do whatever. Just get on out and we'll stop our feet. We'll say, man, no grave. And amen. The big wheels on the bus keep turning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's even nice, right? You know, now, let me clear my voice for this. I have to try to find it. It's in there. Hey, amen. I know Brother John was here at Sunday school lesson. I knew I was in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because the only song we know in the nursery rhyme he didn't sing was Hickory Dickory Dot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just waiting for further confirmation. I had to take what I got. Hickory Dickory Dock. Amen. Amen. It's, it's time. And we're going to have to understand that the time, the clock keeps no ticking. And the next one we'll talk about uh, is pride. All right. Pride! Now, if you come on Wednesday night, we've got a great pastor here. Figure out which hanky we use. <laughs> he taught, he's been teaching from the Bible. I like when the preachers preach out of the Bible, don't you? Yeah. Hey, Amen. I don't like when they preach out of Reader, Reader's Digest and all the other stuff. I like it when they. When they preach from the Bible, he's been preaching and teaching about pride and what pride does to you. I mean, Proverbs chapter number 16, 16, verse number 18, it says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better, is, better it is to be of a humble spirit right. with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. You know, you can be all proud. A lot of times, a lot of proud people, they, they, they think they got it all together and they're all, they got it. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging with Brother Denny. I mean, he's an awesome preacher. You're all proud. 
He's prideful too, not really. I'm just saying that as a. He's like, no, 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 the preacher, I'm glad to have you a part of my ministry. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm dividing the spoil. He's giving me sermons, I'm giving him sermons, we're shouting. Woo! But it's better to walk with the humble. All right. Yeah. It's better to be with the humble people yeah. than divide the spoil with the proud. Yeah. Pride will, will bring destruction to your life. And the Holy Spirit will cause you to fall. Things when you're prideful, you start losing stuff. Destruction. Thank God destroyed that. Ooh, I really like this car. You hit it against a tree. Well, you know, Lord, look at this. Oh, man, I like my TV. And then all of a sudden, it's not working. You know, you're like you're your possession. You're just, uh, I like this shirt, and you rip it out. Hope I had to rip it Hallelujah. Or whatever. It brings destruction. But when you get that haughty spirit, you will lose your salvation. You will fall from here from the Lord. I'm telling you something that you don't want to talk about. Your pridefulness and how proud you are. And then you might think, oh, preacher, I'm not proud. Let me tell you something. That you examine yourself. There are some proud spirits inside of you that you're going to have to get rid of. Amen. You're going to have to, to get it out of your life. Let me tell you, 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 5 says, Likewise, the younger submits yourselves to the elders. Yes. All of you be subject one to another and clothed and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt thee in due time. Pride will keep you from coming to the altar. Pride will keep you from praying. Pride will keep you from getting in the aisle and dancing. Let me tell you something. You say, well, the pastor says get out in the aisle and start dancing, start worshiping. You, you say, well, I don't know. That's pride. When you come to the house of God and the pastor says come to the altar and pray, and you don't want to do it because everybody thinks you're a sinner, everybody thinks that message is about me, we say, that's pride. Yeah. That's right. All right. Maybe you do need a message. And who cares? Who knows? Who cares what they think? It's not about them. It's about being right with God. It's pride. Right. The pastor's preaching about sin. And he says, come to the altar and pray about your sin. Nobody comes to the altar. You're lying. You're sinners. Y'all full of pride. You don't want to let people know that what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. All right. It's pridefulness. Yeah. It will keep you from worshiping. Pridefulness will keep you from praying. I don't need to pray today. I think I've got it all together. I, I, I prayed last night and the pastor prayed for me. If he prays for me, I know I'm going to be all right. I called the pastor this morning and said, just remember me today. And I'm having, I'm having a bad day and I don't think I need to pray. Pastor, don't pray. I tell you, it's pride when you think you're all right. It's pride when you think that, that, you, that you don't need to worship. It's pride when you don't think you need to surrender yourselves. It's pride when you don't feel like you need to humble yourself and be clothed with humility. It's pride when you don't want to submit yourselves to the elders. It's pride when you don't want to submit yourselves one to another. I'm telling you, the Bible says to confess your faults one to another. We yeah. tell you, pride will keep you from confessing your faults. Pride will keep you from, from submitting to the pastor. Pride will keep you from submitting and praying to your brother or sister. We tell you, you need to get rid of the pride. Pride will keep you from surrendering fully to God, your whole self. And you need to be full, uh, fully dependent on God. Amen. But, you, but instead of that, you think that you, you've got it all together and you don't need God. And you already know how to serve Him. Have you ever by your felt that? That's pride. Yeah. When you look at your neighbor and say, oh, he don't know no better if you knew like me. We, the Bible says, if you see your brother, then the fault that he who is meek and humble, submit him. He, he, that he who is spiritual, restore such with the spirit of meekness. Yeah. Be meek. Knowing that you yourself can also fall in that same temptation. All right. You know better than you. Pride says, man, 
I served God for 38 years. And look at that new convert. Oh, if they only knew. If they only knew what I knew, they wouldn't be doing that. And you beat them to death and you get on them and you say you need to do this and you do that and you just hound them and if you was better, if you was better, you get you get more of God. If you just live for God, maybe you feel God more and you do this and that. It's pride. Yeah. We need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of that element that's going to destroy us. It's going to keep us from doing the will of God. It's going to put an end to our walk with God. It's going to keep us from doing the will of God. We're going to have to get rid of it. Tick tock, hickory dickory dock, the elephant. It's going to destroy your time. It's going to destroy your life. It's going to keep you from walking with God. That's the elephant in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right. The next elephant I'm going to talk about is fear and worry. How many has felt that time when you are fearful? Verse John 4, verse number 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. And if you notice that scripture, it says, that herein our love is made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now, how many has heard that statement? Only God can judge me. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. That's a pretty rough statement. Because when you go before God in judgment, and mercy is no more. Grace is no longer to be found. Judgment. God, the righteous judge of all the age, He's going to judge you. He's going to judge you by the book. He's going to take you. You think, that, you think the pastor's hard on you? I mean, and, and the pastor, he'll tell you the word and he'll throw a little bit of salve on you. He'll, he'll give you a little bit of grace, a little bit of mercy. I said, well, brother, here, this is what you need to do. And he, and he guides you along. He helps you. and He, he, he picks you up and, and pat, pat, pats you on the back and furs you up and all that. But when you get to, uh, to, to, to the judgment of God, they, they ain't going to be no uh, patting. They ain't going to be no lovey-dovey. Jesus ain't going to say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Because that's no longer. Because the Bible calls it the dispensation of grace. There is a time that grace is not going to be. Let me tell you, there is a time when mercy is not going to be no more. You had your opportunity when grace comes to an end and mercy comes to an end and judgment stands up. Yeah. Yeah. Judgment stands up. Let me tell you, Jesus looked uh, in the Bible, he, he said, "I." Uh, he said, to "Who who, do, who judges?" He said, he said, "I do not judge no man." Jesus said, "He don't judge anybody." Now, I believe there's a day of judgment, but Jesus ain't coming down and judging you right now because if He judges you, the Bible says His judgments are sure. If He calls white black, white turns black. If He says you're a pigeon, you turn into a pigeon. That's right. He says, shoot a mouse and hickory hickory dock, you'll just be a little mouse. Whatever God says, that's what it happens. When yeah. He makes a judgment, that's what it is. Right. I'm so glad that God isn't casting judgment on me. Lord, give me one more chance. Don't judge me, Lord. Give me one more time of mercy. Don't cast judgment on me and say I'm a lost sinner. Because if you say I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. If you say I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. Because when he puts judgment, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. That's why when he divided the light and darkness, that it happened. It happened just like that. But that day of judgment, that perfect love, it's going to give us that boldness in the day of judgment. Let me tell you that fear of death, that fear that lies upon you of what, when you go to sleep at night, Lord. I don't want to be lost. Lord, I don't want to go to hell. You had that fear of judgment. But we tell you, the Bible says that that love that He gives you is perfect. Yeah. And that love that He gives you is going to give you boldness in the day of judgment. Uh, amen. When you lay your head down at night, no more fear. 
for there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear hath no torment. Yeah. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I tell you, if you're walking in love, you're not going to have no fear. Because I, I know in whom I believe. I know the Lord's got his hand on me. I know that God's going to touch me. I know when I stand before God in judgment, I don't have anything to fear. I can go boldly before the throne of grace. I can go boldly in judgment. I can walk up and say, Lord, I've walked in your perfect love. I've walked in the power of your Holy Ghost. And Lord, you touched me. Lord, I've depended on you. And I'm going to stand before God boldly and say, Lord, I know I've not done everything right, but Lord, here I am because of your love. Here I am because of your mercy. Wow. Yeah. Boldly in judgment. we got to get rid of that fear and the rid of that worry. The next one is, is gossip and tailbearing. Gossip and tailbearing. It's the next elephant that nobody wants to talk about. We know it's a problem. We know what's going on in the church. Yeah. We know people doing it. We know right. gossip going around. And I know that there's not too many Sunday school lessons and Bible studies that pastor don't talk about Facebook and tell and gossiping and, and tweeting around and, and doing all this. And, and you're going on this uh, media side and this thing. You're typing, oh, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm going to post this on all, of, all the, the, the media and all the social media and all that. I'm going to post all this. I'm going to let them know. Hmm. Yeah. Let them know how I feel. <laughs> well, you know, like what you said. <laughs> and every one of my friends that still thinks the way. Man, and uh, would you hear so and so do this and so and so do that? Let me tell you something, there are some tail bearers. But the Bible says that uh, in Proverbs chapter number 11, verse number 13 says that a tail bearer reveals secrets. But he that is of a fruitful spirit conceals the matter. All right. You want to see somebody that's unfruitful? He's a tail bearer. But if you are fruitful in your spirit, you, you can seal the matter. Right. Has anybody ever told you something? <laughs> now, this is a secret. Now, I'm going to tell you, brother, just keep this between me and you. <laughs> I got an Oreo addiction. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. <laughs> you know, maybe I do got an Oreo addiction. <laughs> Confession to get for the soul. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, just confession here. But now, if he goes to hell and he tells people he has an Oreo addiction, no, man, he's all over the place. I'm using Oreo as a joke, but because I didn't want to say something that's offensive to someone. I didn't want to reveal anybody's sin here today. I'm concealing that matter. <laughs> but, you know, people, you know, you tell them the secrets, but they, if they're tell bearers, they go tell and tell, and they reveal secrets. And those people, they're not very fruitful because they're cutting down all the time. When you keep cutting down, you keep tearing down people, and you keep trying to tear down everything that's built up around you, there ain't going to be no fruit. It's just going to be a bunch of dead limbs laying around everywhere. And if you look at certain people and their dead limbs everywhere they go, and things are falling apart, and things are doing this, and things are doing that, you better watch out talking to those people because they're going to tear down some things in your life. And there's some things in your life that, that you need to keep to yourself. Uh, and there's some things in my life that I need to keep to myself. Uh, because just between me and the Lord. Because certain people, they're all about tearing down. They're all about telling tales. They're all about spreading secrets. They're all about revealing stuff. Just because somebody tells you something doesn't mean you need, doesn't mean you need to post it on Facebook. Right. 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 Because one 
tail is one, tail is one. You know, Brother Parker, Brother uh, Thomas used to make the joke, you know, tell Markham, tell them all. That was years ago, uh, back like 2010 or something, he said, tell them Markham, tell them all. But that was it. That was just joking. I, I'm hoping I wasn't like that. But the tail bearer, we tell you, that they, they will reveal things that shouldn't be said. said. That we will destroy their lives and ultimately will destroy them. But the Bible says in verse Timothy 5, in verse number 13 says, And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but talebearers, also, and busybodies. Speaking things which they ought not. Some things you shouldn't just say. That's right. They're busybodies. You know, they're just going about and they're, they're running over here. Hold on. <laughs> you know, they're all about going to stir served up trouble and they're all about going around here and going about there. They're busybodies. They're going from house to house. They're telling things that they shouldn't be telling. They're saying, do you know this? Do you know that so and so? They listen to that kitchen for a gospel music. Or you know so and so I heard him say. I heard him say that the, uh, that the, he used to smoke marijuana. Or oh, whatever, they're just going about speaking things they shouldn't say. That tears down people's character. That's right. right. True or not, some things you should not be said. That's right. That's right. You know, if you see something on Facebook, Twitter, or somebody text messages you or calls you on the phone or knocks on your door and tells you or the mailman comes around and gets you a letter or whatever, if you hear it, you see it, and you that, that doesn't mean you need to tell everybody. Right. Amen. Amen. Some things you shouldn't say. The next one we're going to talk about is hatred. Hatred is uh, is something that you think, you know, people can say, well, I don't hate people. But let me tell you, there are some, some situations that that's in your life and, and some things going on and maybe some things in your past and things that's going on around you has taught you to to hate people. But Proverbs chapter number 10 and verse number 12 says, Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covers us of sin. Let me tell you something. If you hate someone or something back up, you'll start stirring things up. I don't want to get too Bible study here, but you drink on that one. But you know, you ever see those people? You maybe you feel that way. You just you know something going on. You just start stirring stuff up. Cause man, I hope they get what come to them. You just getting there, you know. You know something's going on, and you try to stir up trouble. Some people's all about stirring up trouble. Some people was all about just going about to just just got so much hatred built up. And they see somebody and it's all oh, I can't stand them. I don't I hate their guts and I'm just gonna tell tell them a piece of my mind, but oh I'm not gonna tell them, but I'm gonna start causing some trouble to come in their life. I'm gonna start stirring some stuff up. It's because you have hatred in your heart. Let me tell you something, you're gonna have to get the hatred out of your heart. It's the element that's gonna destroy your life. Uh, first John uh, two, verse number nine says, He that saith uh, uh, he is in the light, or he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness uh, even unto now. Right. Uh, that's true. If you say you're in the light, but you got the hate in your heart, you're in the dark. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. All right. Now, we quote this a lot. He that loveth his brother. Is in the light. You know how to get in the light? In the love. You gotta have the love of God. Yeah. You're gonna have to love how you how they know that you are his disciples. It just calls you love the brethren. <laughs> yeah. His brother abides in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. And he that hateth his brother 
is in darkness right. and walks in darkness and knoweth not whither he goes because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Right. If you find somebody that's full of hatred, you will find somebody whose eyes have been blinded. It doesn't matter how good somebody does. It doesn't matter if they repent. It doesn't matter if they come back to the Lord. You still hate them in your heart, in your mind. It has blinded your eyes to see any good in a situation because you're walking in darkness. I know this is a, supposed to be a funny message, but this is a heavy message. Lord, put this on my heart today, or, uh, this week. Next the elephant I'm going to talk about is lying. Amen. We, we must not lie. Right. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying. Now we notice how it all starts. This is where it starts with. You know what all sins start with? Yeah. Lie. Because the devil is a liar. Yeah. And he is the father of all lies. If you want to know the, 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 the root of all the sin that you're doing, it's lies. But you need to put off lying and speaking uh, or speak, ye, or speak uh, every man the truth uh, uh, with his neighbor. For we are members of one body. Right. So lying will cause us to be angry. Lying will cause us to, to bring, to introduce sin into our lives. We need to get rid of the lying because it will cause us to be angry. It will be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. We tell you the devil feels more at home in a lie than any other place. He feels more at home in a lie. If you can just preach a lie, that's why, that's why the devil is just running rampage out in the world. Because everybody's living a lie. They're, they're, they're speaking a lie. They're preaching a lie. Let me tell you, the devil ain't got no place in this church. Because we're speaking truth. We're speaking power. We're speaking the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says in, in Revelation 21 verse 8. That all liars shall have their part in a lake which burned with fire and brimstone. We tell you something today uh, that you're going to have to get yourself uh, in, uh, in a place uh, to where you're honest with God and you're honest with yourself uh, and you're honest with the pastor and you're honest and you're speaking truthful things uh, and you're not going about telling lies uh, on people. We say, preacher, I'm not telling no lies. Uh, hold on a minute. You're going to have to watch yourself uh, because if you ain't careful, you can speak things that uh, are, to, are true uh, very easily. You tell you because that is the root of sin. You might say, oh brother, you're all right. And everything going okay. And you say, well, yeah, yeah it's going okay. It's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like what the, what the old timers say it as well with my soul. Yeah, everything's falling apart. But I know who, who can put it all back together again. Yes, I know that, uh, that uh, uh, things aren't exactly the way it needs to be. But I know in whom I believe. I know that I'm going to be honest with my God. I'm going to be honest with the Lord. Because He's created a place that for all liars to go to. It's with fire and brimstone. It is that second death that we all can, we are trying to avoid. It's that place when we, when we reach that place of no return. One day will be our last chance. Our elephant will destroy our time. And time will be no more. Time will be no more. I want to read Revelation chapter 10, verse number uh, verse number 5, verse number through 7 says, And the angel which sat upon the throne and upon the sea, upon the earth, lifted up his hand to the heaven and swore by him 
that to live us forever and ever, whom created heaven and the things that are therein, and the earth and the things that therein, and the sea and the things that which are therein, that there should be no, or there shall be time no longer. There's going to be a time when time has come to an end. No more time when you reach that final place of judgment. The elephant has done put away the time. Death has come into your life. We're going to have to get our lives back to the Lord because one day it's going to be our own time, our last time, and God's going to be finished with all the things He's done. I don't want the Lord to say, I'm finished with you. You ever right. said that? I'm just finished with it. I'm done with this whole situation. One day, God's going to say, I've dealt with him for the last time. I'm finished. No more. How it is is how it is. Time will be no more. Let's all stand. Musicians don't have to come to the music. I said that as a joke. Let's just lift our hands right now. Love the Lord. Lord, we love you, Jesus. You must think it's all fun and games. I can just keep on living the way I'm living. I can kill, keep on being in rebellion and walking in witchcraft. Because rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Yes, it is. Uh, Pastor, this person talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Yes, it is. It is. And if you're walking in rebellion, you're following after the spirit of a witch. But I'm going to tell you, I'm on witch hunt tonight. Today, and the spirit of rebellion is going to have to leave this church. If you're not fully submitted to the Lord and to the pastor and to this church, and in any area of your life, I know I'm not a pastor and I'm not going to try to be a pastor. I'm not going to hound on anybody or tell anybody anything. I'm going to tell you, if you're in rebellion, you need to submit. You are very prideful. You're following after witchcraft. And when you are uh, in rebellion, you have a bewitching spirit. Right. That means that you are out to bewitch other people. That's why Paul said in Galatians, said, Oh, ye foolish Galatians! Who has to bewitch you? Why are you in rebellion? Why ain't you doing what you know to do? You know that you should be doing such and such, but you're not doing it. Who has bewitched you? Some rebellious, bitter, hateful person come up to me and they was telling me something about the pastor and something about the church. They were saying all kinds of stuff, and then they just got me to do it. They bewitched you. They put a spell on you. And when you have that spell on you and you're being bewitched and you're in rebellion, you're unable to see things clearly because right. you're under a spell. Right. I'm going to be spooky, but That's true. You're you know, it's like that it. song that said, you know, the doors used to say, you, you go out here, I'll put a spell on you. You know, that's what people do. They put a spell on you. Follow me, don't follow the pastor. You don't have to pray like that. They were rebellion, they waved a spell on it. And tell you what, we need to get that out of here. Yes. We need to cast some spirits off of you. Because that elephant of rebellion is going to destroy you. That that is going to put an end to the time. One day God ain't going to deal with you no more. The elephant's going to come and destroy your, your clock and your 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 draw, your time, and season of grace in your life. And God's going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. He's not no longer going to deal with you. You're going to have to get right. God's going to
going to give you the last chance. God's not always going to strive with you. He tell you if you're in rebellion, you need to submit yourself therefore to God. And resist the devil. And he will be. That spirit on us, we're rebellious, we're, we're bitter, we're hateful. We're, we, we got, we, we're, we're just hateful with everything. We got the spirit of hatred, we got the spirit of pride, we got the spirit uh, of, of, of gossip, we got the spirit of division. We, we go about trying to cause division in our lives, in our heart. We tell you, this should be a united place. This should be a united church. This should be a united Pentecostal church. This should be a time when we come together and we fight together. We love together. We pray together. We come together and we're supporting each other. Everybody, one another. That's the whole purpose of the Spirit. It's unified. I won't keep you standing too long. This is our hands to the Lord. You know, I've been a Christian a long time. 